Today, I'll be taking you through the steps to complete a Quell irrigation system audit. An audit's purpose is to see how effective an irrigation system is at applying water to a specific hydrozone. It's about taking a zone that's in good working order and identifying ways to increase efficiency. The results can be used to develop an irrigation schedule. We'll turn on the system and do a quick walkthrough inspection to make sure the system is functioning correctly. If system performance is significantly impaired, system testing may be an inefficient use of your time. Your pre-audit inspection will include nozzle and sprinkler heads. Some of the things to look for are broken heads or heads that are spraying onto hard surfaces. If you find standing water around a head, this could be a sign of a weeping valve, cracked head, or even low head drainage. Today, we'll assume the system performance is reasonable and proceed with system testing. We'll be using a test area with overhead spray irrigation. We're going to need some tools to help us collect the information, and those tools include a pressure gauge, an anemometer to measure wind speed, a measuring tape or measuring wheel, flags, a soil probe, and catch cans. The first step is to test the wind speed. Only proceed with your audit if the wind speed is five miles per hour or less. Today, I'm testing the static pressure at the backflow preventer. To measure the static pressure, the water line is charged, but no water is running. Here's the test cock where we'll connect the gauge and test the static pressure. This flathead screw facilitates the pressure read. When it's vertical, it's on. When it's horizontal, it's off. Our static pressure reading is 70 PSI. Measuring the operating pressure, also called the dynamic pressure, is our next observation. It's good to test the dynamic pressure from multiple locations. Check heads closest and furthest from the valve, as well as those at the top and bottom of slopes. We'll connect the pressure gauge underneath the nozzle onto a T-fitting. Simply remove the nozzle, put on the T-fitting, and replace the nozzle. Then turn on the zone and record the readings on the pressure gauge. Manufacturer specifications say optimal pressure for this nozzle is around 30 PSI. Here you can see we're at about 58 PSI. Now that you have an operating pressure, you can remove the gauge and reinstall the sprinkler nozzle. Make sure that the spray pattern is in the proper orientation. Next, we'll use a soil probe to determine the soil texture and root depth. The next step is to measure the area. You can use a wheel, a measuring tape, or measure by pacing. For example, each one of my steps is about three feet. Observations made during the audit can be used to suggest system improvements. The next step is to set up our irrigation test. We'll run the system and mark all the sprinkler heads with flags. Now that our flags are in place, it's time to place the catch cans. First, make sure that your catch cans are all the same size and shape. This uniformity will ensure accurate readings across the test area. Audits require a minimum of 24 catch cans, but you can use as many as the test area calls for. But remember, the total number of cans should be a number divisible by four. Lay out your catch cans in a uniform grid. Leave a space of approximately two feet between any spray head and catch can. For rotary and fixed sprinklers, you'll place the cans five to eight feet apart. For rotors, the spacing is 10 to 20 feet. And you'll wanna make sure all the cans are set in a level orientation and not tilted. One last step before running the system is to remove the flags, as the flags could obstruct the sprinkler spray pattern. Now that the cans are placed and the flags are removed, it's time to run the system. You'll need to run the system long enough to collect a minimum of 20 milliliters of water. Typical run times are five to 10 minutes for fixed spray sprinklers and 10 to 30 minutes for rotors and rotating sprinklers. While the hydrozone is running, you'll observe and document any issues using your irrigation issues checklist. It's a good idea to take photographs for future reference. Now it's your turn. We'll replay a short segment while you look for inefficiencies and record your observations. Write down any issues you find on your checklist. The checklist will help you communicate issues and repair priorities to the property owner or manager.
What are the observations you noted? Did you find three to four things that might be wrong with this zone? Any tilted heads affecting water trajectory? What does the hardscape around the irrigation area indicate? Now that we've run the system, it's time to start measuring the amount of water in our catch cans. Make sure you hold the catch can level to read the volume of water in milliliters or depth of water in inches. If your catch can does not have a scale on it, you'll need to pour the water into a graduated cylinder with a milliliter scale to obtain the measurement. Record your catch can reading on the audit form. Also, make sure that the catch cans are numbered on the diagram. Once you have all the volumes recorded, the collection part of your audit is complete. And now that you have the data, you can start your calculations to make sure you have an efficient and water-wise irrigation system. Thanks for watching.